The next item of business is a statement by Jean Freeman on clinical waste services. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Jean Freeman for 10 minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm grateful for this opportunity to update members on the current situation on clinical waste services for the NHS in Scotland and to set out the action the Scottish Government has taken to support, support both NHS Scotland and those staff who lost their jobs following Healthcare Environmental Services Limited ceasing its business operations in December of last year. As members are aware, there has been considerable interest in both Scotland and England in recent weeks on clinical waste services to the health service, and in particular uh, on uh, Healthcare Environmental Services Limited, a company based in Shots, who until recently operated contracts with NHS boards and NHS trusts across uh, the country. Clinical waste is a niche sector which requires specialist equipment, facilities and staff to manage the whole process from collection through transportation and storage and on to final disposal and incineration. Since 2009, healthcare environmental services have provided those services to our NHS. However, following concerns raised by NHS England around significant backlogs of waste being stored and enforcement notices placed on HES sites in England, we, understa we understood that there was a possibility of a potential disruption to services in Scotland. In August 2018, officials from the Department of Health and Social Care in England contacted the Scottish Government raising concerns of the amount of clinical waste collected from NHS England sites and being stored at healthcare environmental services at sites in England. The volume of waste stored and being reported by the Environment Agency were in the region of 7,800 tonnes some of which breached storage conditions and or exceeded maximum storage times. In October, 15 NHS trusts in England terminated contracts with HES with more reporting missed or late collections. At that time, HES sites in Scotland were not in breach of any environmental permits, licenses or storage limits. However, on the 12th of September last year, SEPA, as part of routine monitoring and inspection activities, issued two enforcement notices to HES related to the tracking and management of waste with two further enforcement notices issued on 11th of December relating to the storage of waste. The Scottish Government, NHS Scotland and SEPA were closely monitoring the situation and were in close contact with authorities in England. Given the serious nature of the emerging situation, the Scottish Government directed uh, NSS to ensure a national contingency plan building on local board arrangements would be ready for use in the event of any disruption to NHS waste collection services in Scotland. NSS were in contact with the company HES during this period to ensure that they, were, they HES, were able to deliver their contractual obligations. The company repeatedly provided assurance that it could, could meet those contract obligations. But on the 7th of December, HES advised NHS boards in Scotland that it was, and I quote, unable to continue to provide clinical waste services with immediate effect. As required in the contract terms and conditions, HES was given up to 20 days to resume normal service, but the company failed to do so, and the company gave notice it had ceased trading from the 27th of December. Let me be clear, it was the company who breached its contracts with 18 H NHS boards, leaving Scotland's a and &E departments, our hospitals, our community health centres, GP practices, dentists, without essential clinical waste services. But with the planning work already in place, full contingency arrangements were operationalised across NHS Scotland to ensure that boards, GPs, dentists and others received the service. These contingency arrangements continue and involve a range of companies in Scotland and across the UK working with NHS Scotland staff. National Services Scotland and NHS boards are closely monitoring local and national arrangements and have acted quickly to resolve any emerging issues. The contingency arrangements are also subject to robust checks by SEPA and the Department of Transport to ensure that all regulatory requirements are met. Throughout, 
our priority has been to ensure measures are in place so that NHS Scotland can continue to receive clinical waste services and that public safety is assured. There have been no reports that patient care has been affected or public safety compromised and we are working to ensure that this remains the case. My thanks go to those staff working to support these arrangements. Presiding officer, contingency measures and ultimately maintaining NHS services come at a cost. The Scottish Government has provided 1.4 million towards initial contingency planning and NSS is leading on managing contingency arrangements on behalf of health boards. Under the terms and conditions of contract, health boards are entitled to reclaim costs incurred from HES and they will seek to do so. <clears throat> the new process for a new national contract for all NHS clinical waste management services in Scotland started in 2017 with tenders invited in 2018. The process is nearing completion and final contract details and an implementation plan are being agreed with Tradibe Healthcare Limited and should be concluded by the end of this month. The new contract is effective from the 1st of April this year for a period of up to 10 years and with a value estimated at 100 million. I, my apologies, presiding officer, I believe that should be 10 million. Introducing a single national contract covering all health boards will further improve uh, NHS, how NHS waste is managed and offers a range of community, educational and employment benefits. A new single national contract will bring various benefits to NHS boards and communities over the next 10 years and we are in a good position going forward. There are, however, still significant issues yet to be resolved outside of ensuring NHS provision, but relating directly to uh, health environmental services, including supporting former employees, work that is being led by the Minister for Business, Fair Work and Skills, and maintaining environmental standards at HES sites in Shots and Dundee, work led by the Cabinet Secretary for the Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform, with support from SEPA. I know that across this chamber, our thoughts are with the employees who lost their jobs at Christmas. This is, without question, a very difficult time for them and their families. The Scottish Government has provided and promotes a range of support, including finding alternative employment and accessing redundancy payments, including offering workforce support to HES for its employees in November last year, which was not accepted until the 27th of December, and support to over 125 employees at an event arranged at the Salvation Army Centre in Shots on the 3rd and 4th of January and in Dundee on the 10th of January. Feedback from that event suggested that a number of employees have already managed to secure new work. And members I know will be pleased to know that of the 262 staff across Scotland and England entitled to redundancy payments, 244 have now received payments they are entitled to from the redundancy payment service. RPS will then try and reclaim these costs from the company. Former employees who have set up an action group called At Help Healthcare had a constructive meeting last week with the Minister for Business to discuss a range of issues. The group has written directly to its former employers asking them to do the right thing and pay staff wages that were owed for December. The Minister for Business also wrote to the Managing Director seeking agreement to approach the company's bankers on the same issue, but this has been refused. In terms of environmental issues, as is already stated, HES was subject to four environmental enforcement actions in Scotland and several more in England. It is essential, therefore, that SEPA continue to monitor sites in Shots and Dundee to ensure there is no risk to the public. SEPA is also continuing to seek regulatory compliance from HES to ensure that the sites are cleared safely and always disposed of appropriately should this become necessary. There is at present no significant environmental risk and no risk to the well-being of local communities. Presiding officer, in closing, I want to say that Scotland's health services were placed at risk as a result of HES breaching its contract. 
contingency arrangements developed in anticipation of just such an eventuality, developed in consultation with NSS, SEPA and a range of other partners, ensured that there was no disruption to frontline services. The Scottish Government will continue to support former employees to access the monies they are owed and the benefits to which they may be entitled, but this relies heavily on the cooperation of the company's directors. SEPA will continue to monitor the Shots and Dundee sites to safeguard the public and local communities and will take enforcement action should this be required. Finally, let me reiterate my thanks to those involved in ensuring the collections of clinical waste from NHS sites across Scotland continue and frontline patient services remain interrupted. And my thanks and best wishes to former employees of HES who are being supported at this difficult time for them and their families. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Minister. Can I, can I say I know you, you will understand how important it is that the Chamber get the right figure in relation to the new contract that you mentioned. Uh, I wonder if you would like to confirm that figure for the Chamber, please, before we go any further. Uh, yes, um, and my apologies, Presiding Officer. Um, it's, a, it's a typing mistake and one that in my proofreading I didn't spot. Um, it should be £10 million. Thank you very much. I presume that's now clear for everyone. Thank you. And the Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement. I'll allow around 20 minutes for that, and then we'll move on to the next item of business. Uh, it would be helpful if members who wish to ask a question uh, could please press the request to speak buttons now, and I call Miles Briggs. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to start by thanking the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement this afternoon. Um, there are, however, many unanswered questions the SNP uh, must answer today. And firstly, I'd like to ask what steps have been taken to protect and train NHS staff who are currently being tasked with handling hazardous clinical waste in our hospitals, something which is not mentioned in this statement this afternoon. Secondly, under the proposals which have been outlined today by the Cabinet Secretary, can she now confirm that all Scottish clinical waste will now need to be transported to England for incineration? What additional costs will this have for Scottish taxpayers? The Cabinet Secretary has outlined £10 million today. Given that what we've seen, it might be closer to £100 million by the time this fiasco is cleared up. And finally, can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that all clinical, hazard clinical waste is now being transported in vehicles designed to actually transport clinical waste and that all are displaying hazardous load signage? Jean Freeman. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, and I thank Mr Briggs for his question. Let me start by saying if there is a fiasco here at all, it is not one of this government's making. And indeed, the fact that those services have continued is thanks to the anticipatory measures of having a contingency plan. Any break in services was caused by a private sector company failing to honour its contract. And it really is important that we understand that and not something that this government caused or created. In terms of protecting uh, NHS staff and training NHS staff, of course, NHS staff uh, have uh, always had an involvement uh, in uh, the uh, collection and uh, getting ready for uh, onward collection uh, of clinical waste, uh, and that continues. And where uh, additional measures uh, have been asked of them, then uh, the boards have risked assessed those uh, we'll have uh, discussed those through the partnership forum that exists in our boards, which is where discussions take place with staff and with trade unions, and where, as for example, in the case in Inverness, uh, where porters were injured uh, as a consequence of uh, their involvement in this, the board in Highland uh, looked at that matter very quickly indeed, uh, undertook uh, measures to ensure that it could not happen again, and indeed uh, employed an additional member of staff to, insist, uh, to assist in that work. In terms of uh, transportation for incineration, yes, the transportation is for incineration south of the border, uh, as, as was the case uh, prior to the contract uh, being broken by HES, with the exception uh, of, in the latter stages of their contract, the uh, sites that they had for incineration in shots. Uh, and obviously, uh, since they have ceased trading, those, those uh, facilities are not available currently in uh, the interim arrangements. Uh, and yes, 
uh, all the transportation uh, has to meet the regulatory, regulatory requirements of both SEPA uh, and the Transport Department to ensure that they meet the standards that are required. Uh, and so NSS is responsible for ensuring that that is the case uh, and uh, uh, they are meeting those requirements at this point. Monica Lennon. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her statement. When the UK Government convened a COBRA meeting, I think we all feared that this clinical waste scandal could affect our NHS in Scotland, the workforce of, an, of Healthcare Environmental Services Limited, and indeed our communities. Devastatingly, those workers who kept our NHS operating were dumped by their bosses at Christmas without any pay or notice. The contingency planning hasn't benefited those workers. NHS boards had continued to put money into HES's bank account, but rather than pay staff what they were owed in wages, people have been left to rely on food banks. So what exactly did the government, or when did the government know this company was in serious trouble, and what preemptive steps did it take to protect the workforce? What is the cost of contingency plans to health boards? And when were boards advised to stop paying HES Limited? And given that NHS still retains a duty of care for the stockpiled waste, what negotiations are taking place with HES Limited and other relevant parties over the future of the sites at Shots and Dundee? Jean Freeman. So there were, I'm grateful to Ms Lennon for uh, those questions. There were a number of them. I hope I've, I've got them all, but um, please let me know if I haven't. Um, in terms of, um, I, I'm going to repeat this, we are in this situation because a private sector company breached its contract. Um, in terms of NHS continuing to put money into the bank account of HES, NHS Scotland paid the money that was owed for the services that were delivered up to the point when HES ended uh, and breached its contract. That, that is perfectly right. So, so you have a bill, you, you are due to pay the bill, you pay the bill. Uh, in terms of the future of the sites uh, at uh, Dundee and Shots, um, th this is a very difficult situation in terms of being able to have discussions and negotiations with the company because the company has ceased trading but has not put itself into insolvency. That is part of the real difficulty that the employees face. Uh, and they are owed those December wages. And as I said in my statement, uh, my colleague, Mr. Hepburn, has attempted uh, to intervene and, and ensure that they are paid those wages. But we need the company's permission to speak to the, the bank, the, their own bank, and, and that has been refused. Um, the government has acted and indeed offered uh, pay support, uh, I think, as I said in my statement from November, uh, last year to the company. It wasn't accepted until the 27th of December. Um, we can't just walk into a site uh, in that way. We, we don't, and nor should we, uh, have those direct powers. So these matters are the matters that get resolved by cooperation and discussion. And if the other party won't cooperate and discuss, then you're a bit stuck. So um, in terms of NHS Scotland and the continued safe removal and disposal of clinical waste, I think I have outlined that we took the necessary preemptive measures by ensuring that we would have a contingency plan uh, at a point when there were clear difficulties with the NHS England and that company, and then we were able to operationalise those contingency plans uh, despite the company having assured us on the 7th of December it could meet its contract obligations, but on the 20th of December telling us that it could not. So in a very short space of time, we moved to do that. I think I've probably missed one of your questions. Perhaps one of your colleagues, if they are going to make uh, a statement or ask me a question, they could pick that up for you and I'll be sure to answer it. Right. The first two questions and answers have understandably taken a long time. There was a lot of content there. So we'll have to be a bit quicker if we're going to get through them all. And I call Alison Johnson to be followed by Alex Cole-Hamilton. Thank you. Uh, thank you, presiding officer. On the 12th of September last year, SEPA issued two enforcement notices and they followed those with a further two um, on the 11th of December. And within a couple of weeks, the company has given notice that it had ceased trading. Just for clarity, are we to understand that the government and its agencies were completely unaware of this impending crisis and how frequent were SEPA's inspections up to the point at which the situation became critical? 
Jean Freeman. So I've never said that this government was completely unaware uh, that otherwise we would not have taken the necessary steps in knowing that there were difficulties between the company and health trusts in uh, NHS England. We would never have taken the necessary steps to ensure that should there be uh, a difficulty in Scotland in terms of fulfilling the contract, that we had those contingency plans in order to continue to ensure that clinical waste was uplifted, stored and disposed of in a way that protected both patient and public safety. So as soon as it became clear that there were difficulties south of the border, we understood, as I think I said in my statement, that there was the potential for problems in Scotland. But at that point, there was uh, no uh, significant difficulty. SEPA, as part of its normal inspection process, and in terms of the frequency, I'm happy to check exactly what that frequency uh, was over the contract period and advise uh, Ms Johnson of that specific number. But in terms of its regular inspection process, issued initially those two enforcement notices and then subsequently two further enforcement notices. And of course, the company has time to comply with those notices, but then on the uh, 7th of December advised us that they could not meet their contract obligations. We gave them the 20 days that they're entitled to to get back into a place where they could. 27th of December, they advised us they'd cease trading. Alex Crawlhampton. Thank you, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. Healthcare Environmental Services also held the contract for the disposal of animal remains and clinical waste from Edinburgh Zoo in my constituency. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, are there still animal re remains at the shot site? What other non-NHS contracts did the company serve? And what contingency is being offered to those companies to facilitate the safe disposal of their clinical waste? Jane Freeman. Uh, my understanding, but I will check this and return to Mr Cole Hamilton on this matter, is that where there is clinical waste for disposal, whether it is, it is of uh, animal or human origin, the contingency arrangements are picking up on that obligation. In terms of other non-HS contracts that the company had, uh, I, I do not have that information. Uh, I don't know if... Uh, if we do as a government hold that information, that would be uh, company information. Uh, so I'm unable to give Mr. Cole Hamilton uh, that uh, information uh, him, uh, to him uh, this afternoon. Now we're more than halfway through the session. I do have a little bit extra time, but not much. So please, short questions and answers. Please, Philip McGregor, followed by Brian Whittle. Thank you, President Officer. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware of reports of a build up of clinical waste at a Cope Bridge Health Centre. In my constituency, I raised this as a supplementary in this chamber last week. The local paper the Advertiser have since again highlighted the issue and has had wide circulation. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline if the arrangements being put in place will prevent any future build-up of waste? Jean Freeman. Uh, yes, I can. My understanding is that collections have returned to normal and are being monitored on a daily basis by NSS. There was clinical waste backed up at NHS sites, and this was due uh, to uh, uh, a diminution in service uh, from uh, HES uh, prior to ceasing trading uh, and before the new arrangements were put in place. And of course, those new arrangements in some instances took a little bit of time to bed in. But now my understanding is that collections have returned to normal, backlog has been cleared, and they are being monitored on a daily basis. Brian Whittle, followed by Alex Neal. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, last week, uh, Cabinet Secretary Rosanna Cunningham uh, estimated that the total clearance and disposal cost would be around 250,000. And I note from your statement, Cabinet Secretary, the Scottish Government has provided 1.4 million towards the initial contingency planning. I think, with that in mind, are you confident that the costs will not continue to rise uh, exponentially? Jean Freeman. Well, the, the 1.4 million, is, as Mr Whittle rightly says, is towards the initial contingency planning. And the NSS have now taken over uh, the management of the contingency arrangements. Of course, what that means is that our boards are no longer paying HES uh, for services that they are not receiving. And when we get to the end of the contingency period and the new contract starts, then we'll be able to rebalance 
the funding between what our boards would have normally paid to HES for the months in which there's been contingency arrangements and the amount of money that NSS have paid out to cover those contingency arrangements at that point, uh, I will know if there is any uh, a gap uh, between what would normally have been paid and what we've had to pay in contingency arrangements. And of course, contingency arrangements do carry additional costs because you have to uh, bring in trailers, additional storage facilities and so on uh, in order to make sure that you can continue to deliver the service. So when we get to the end of the contingency period and the new contract begins uh, with the new contractor, then I will be able to uh, give Mr Whittle and other members of this chamber uh, both the exact cost of the contingency arrangements in full, how that is balanced against what our boards would have normally paid to HES and whether or not there is a deficit between those two figures. Alex Neil, followed by Jenny Mara. Thank you, Presiding Officer. As a constituency member for Shots, can I thank the Scottish Government for all the tremendous help they've given so far uh, to the workers who've lost their jobs uh, at Hassock Rig in Shots. Uh, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if we can persuade the government to give further assistance because Neil Gray, my colleague and I, have brought in specialist lawyers and it will take six to nine months before people actually get their wages back and other payments they are due going through the normal employment tribunal process. Is there any way that some pressure can be brought to bear to speed up this process? And secondly, a very specific question for the Cabinet Secretary for Health. Could she, when the new contract is being awarded, put some pressure on the new contractor to give priority to recruiting former HES workers uh, to carry out the new contract, particularly as TUPI does not apply in this case? Jean Freeman. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. In terms of the first part of uh, Mr Neil's question, um, I, I would suggest that I ask uh, my colleague, Mr Hepburn, uh, to respond uh, in writing to Mr Neil in terms of whether or not uh, there is anything further that the government might do to insist that employees uh, receive the December uh, wages, which I believe is what Mr Neil is talking about, uh, that they are due. Um, and I, I wouldn't want uh, to intervene in another portfolio and talk about something I didn't know anything about. Um, so Mr Hepburn will uh, respond. In terms of the second part of the question, a very important part of it, NHS National Services Scotland, in uh, conjunction with the uh, Trerebi Healthcare, are arranging an information and recruitment day to be held in shots in the next few days. And when we have the exact date for that, I will make sure that all uh, relevant members, including Mr Neil uh, and other colleagues, are aware of that date. Uh, but uh, the employees uh, of the former company will certainly be informed and the new company uh, who will take over the contract uh, once uh, all the conclusions of the negotiations are completed uh, by the end of this month uh, will uh, undertake that information and recruitment day, which I hope gives Mr Neil some assurance, but more importantly, to those who have lost their jobs from HES. Jenny Mara, followed by Emma Harper. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I back Alec Neil's call that there is no stone left unturned to make sure that these workers get the money that they are due, that our workers in Dundee are waiting for wages that are due to them as well? Can I also ask the Health Secretary, the, she talks about the cost of contingency plans to health board. Can I ask her, is the Scottish Government pursuing HES's insurers to see if the public purse can recover some of that cost from them? And my third brief question is just to clarify her answer to Ms Lennon. Um, she talked about the 10-year contract being worth £10 million. We're just a little bit unsure of that because we understand from the press that three health boards made a payment of approximately one million for could the last three months. Speed up, Ms. So the ten million doesn't really stack up. If she could clarify that, that would be helpful. Thank you. Could I clarify for the chamber that there are members here who are not going to get their questions because of the time taken by their colleagues? Jean Freeman. Uh, Presiding officer, can I first of all apologise to the chamber for causing considerable confusion about how much this contract is? It's ten million pounds a year for 10 years, 100 million. So I hope that clarifies it. I hope that's in the record and my apologies to uh, the chamber and to members uh, for uh, confusing everybody on that matter. In terms of uh, no stone left unturned, um, 
th th I believe that the government is doing everything that it can. Uh, Mr Hepburn uh, has advised me that not only did he seek uh, the uh, company's uh, permission to contact the their bank, uh, which was refused. He has now written to the bank on behalf of the uh, employees uh, to see if the bank can assist in ensuring that they receive the monies that they're entitled to. The other question um, that uh, was asked from Ms Mara was about his insurers, uh, and we are seeking legal advice on that and, another, and a range of other matters in terms of the whole contract. I'm sure you appreciate that there are three portfolios involved in this from different perspectives. Uh, in terms of the environment, in terms of uh, the employees and a business, and, and obviously my uh, interest and concern in terms of the NHS. So we are looking at all the, the ways in which we may assist a resolution of this matter. Emma Harper. Thank you. I welcome the robust contingency plans that NHS Scotland have developed. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that these measures will remain in place until a new contract begins and that the new contract will, at the very minimum, adhere to these standards? Jean Freeman. Uh, I'm grateful to Ms Harper for that. The contingency arrangements will remain in place until the national contract is fully operational, so we will have no break in service. Uh, we will have the contingency arrangements continuing, the national contract beginning, uh, and the contingency arrangements won't pull back until we are absolutely confident that the new national contract is fully operational. Uh, the new national framework agreement includes an updated specification, meets in current environmental targets of the Scottish Government, and provides greater visibility of waste streams both locally and nationally, and of course, a single contract for the whole of our health service in Scotland is exactly the way we should be doing this, rather than a series of individual board contracts. And the last question is Alistair Allen. Given what she's just reported today about the bank and other matters, is the Cabinet Secretary satisfied with the level of engagement and cooperation that the Scottish Government has received from healthcare environmental services since this situation first came to light? Jean Freeman. Well, well, no, uh, I'm not. I don't think uh, anyone is. I, I certainly don't think uh, the employees uh, of the company uh, who are skilled and experienced and have worked hard uh, have been treated either fairly or well uh, in the manner in which they've been dealt with. Uh, it is a particularly difficult time of year, of course, at Christmas, to be told that you've lost your job, but to be told that with absolutely notice and not to be paid the wages you're due is um, completely unacceptable. Um, so, no, I'm not satisfied with the way in which uh, the company has handled either its contractual obligations to our National Health Service or its absolute contractual and other obligations to its workforce. We have been trying, both Scottish Government and Scottish Enterprise, uh, to uh, cooperate, support and work with HES since the autumn of last year, offering a range of business support uh, and support in terms of the workforce and have had uh, little, if any, cooperation at all. And in terms of the health service contract, uh, to be advised uh, in a very short space of time that you cannot meet your contractual obligations, and then in an equally short space of time to say you've ceased trading and that's it, you've packed up shop, is not the way, in my opinion, that anyone who takes contract obligations seriously would behave. That concludes questions on the statement on clinical waste services. Apologies to Alison Harris, James Kelly and Shona Robson, who I wasn't able to call. Good. Quickly change places, please. We're a bit pushed for time now.